So Regen, our, we're a business that we've been going for about 10 years and our purpose is to enable rivers to sparkle and farmers to stand tall. So there's two really important parts to that. And the first is water quality is an issue in, in New Zealand that we want to improve it and agricultural practice and managing that better is a part of it. But as an outcome from that, we really want our farmers to be able to stand tall and be proud of the work that they're doing growing food for New Zealand and the rest of the world. We pr do this by giving farmers tools in their hand that enable them to know what's happening on their farm and then to give them daily decision support around what they should do with effluent irrigation and water irrigation. Then record those actions so that they can show that they're being compliant and actually gradually over time improve their practice. So what you see there is an effluent storage pond. Now, this is a photo that's taken in the autumn and that very large pond that costs several hundred thousand dollars to construct uh, is pretty much full. And that's a problem because in the autumn, effluent ponds should actually be largely empty because you need the storage over winter and into the spring, which is when all the rain comes. So how do you um, enable farmers to make sure they've got their ponds empty at the right time so they've actually got that storage available so that they don't end up in that crisis situation of irrigating effluent onto wet pastures, which is when it then leaches into waterways or runs off into rivers. So one of the things that we've done is said, it's actually some pretty simple information. One is actually knowing how much effluent you've got in that pond. I don't know from that picture, can you see, uh, is it half empty, three quarters full? You know, it's really difficult to judge. And then how do you know the days that you can actually put the effluent out safely and it's going to be, all those nutrients are going to be used by the grass to grow? Um, and avoid risking um, irrigation. So what we've done is we, as I said, we provide farmers with these daily recommendations on the days they can irrigate the effluent or the days they should put it into storage. But we realised we needed to go a step further. So we've developed this dashboard. So if you've got two or three farms that you're um, own or overseeing, you actually need to just quickly know who's got everything managed well and where are my problems. So a really simple dashboard, just bringing together this information we're collecting. And on the left, it's just the status of how, that, how full the pond is. Red means that the farm, that pond level is too high for that time of year. And then on the right hand side, the GMP status, good management practice. So how many times has the irrigation been done when the time was good for effluent application and how many times have they perhaps irrigated when they shouldn't? So straight away you can see, is this farm well managed? Is it where it needs to be? Or is this a farm I need to actually be ringing out and saying, what's going on? What's your plan for getting that effluent storage level down? So, and then calculating something like the pumping hours to target. So if your pond's full or it's fuller than it needs to be, actually how many hours are you going to have to invest over the next month or so to get it back down to the target? So putting really good, simple management information right in the hands of the farmers, the people whose job it is to be making sure that those farms are compliant 365 days a year. And from a sustainability perspective, what's sitting there in that pond is thousands of dollars of fertiliser that they've already paid for, like they've paid to grow the grass, the cows have ate it and they've made the dung and that has now been stored in the pond. So there's a real financial benefit for a farmer to get that effluent applied to land at a time the grass can use it to grow. They've saved money, they've kept the waterways clean and they can stand up and say, we're compliant 365 days of the year. So that's Regen. Hello everyone. As the sign says, I'm the Founder and Managing Director of uh, Farmode Systems. Now Farmode Systems is a startup based in, in Christchurch. Uh, we've got four employees and we've been going for uh, over three years now. Uh, it started out with us looking at how we could bring remote monitoring to agriculture. And we really believe, and I'll show you in a few minutes, we're going to be a revolution to the agricultural industry. Uh, we've got a unique solution which is patented. Uh, applications are going around the world at the moment. Uh, we've got trials underway at the moment. We haven't actually got our system yet released, but we've got trials underway on over 10 farms in New Zealand. We've got farms in Australia, and we've got another five farms in the Netherlands trialling as well. So it's a, a system that's got global applications. And as I mentioned, we're looking at uh, releasing it uh, later this year. So what are we talking about? We're talking about remote monitoring devices. So we've got a device here, which we place out directly in, uh, in pastures around the farm. 
Now these devices are, are unique. No one else is out there trying to measure the outputs of the system. So we're measuring how much pasture is growing. You know, dairy farming, which is our primary target, is actually two types of farms. You're a pasture grass growing farm as well as a milk farm. And these two parts of the system, it's very easy to measure how much milk you're growing, but it's very difficult to measure in real time how much pasture you're growing. And we've got a unique solution to do that. So these devices, uh, primarily up the top here, we have uh, an array of infrared sensors. And we take over 7,500 measurements a night with these sensors. And we're basically calculating the average pasture profile height above the ground. And then we have a whole bunch of algorithms that we've developed with different research partners over the last year and to turn those uh, calculations or those heat measurements into kilograms of dry matter. And then every night those measurements are sent back wirelessly via a Spark LoRaWAN network to our database. Um, these devices are, are solar powered. Um, we've had a lot of experience out there with real animals, so they're designed to be very farm tough. Um, they've got springs at the bottom to allow them to bend. Uh, and we've also got soil uh, temperature and soil moisture at two different depths underneath as well. So we're getting a real picture of what's going on in those paddocks around the farm. Uh, then the other really cool thing that we do is we actually combine this data with hyperspectral images. Now New Zealand is fantastic at growing grass, but you need, you need rain to do that uh, in most parts of the country, and that rain unfortunately means you don't get hyperspectral images every day. But what our system does is we take the data that we get from our devices, and the amount of pasture you get does change every day, and then we combine it with hyperspectral images, which allows us to see the spread of that pasture, and that spread actually te st tends to stay quite consistent for, for weeks at this time. So every day we combine measurements from 10 or so devices with our hyperspectral images from the farm and then using a, a geospatial map of the farm we provide measurements for every zone or every paddock across the farm on a daily basis. So you might be asked, so what's that got to do with nutrition? <laughs> so number one of the, the reasons our dairy farmers use our system is to increase production. Uh, there's a number of bodies of research from Massey and from Lincoln and from Dairy NZ looking at how much uh, production we can increase by managing pastures properly. And the 20% is from an average dairy farmer, so it's not even a bad dairy farmer. An average dairy farmer to a top performing dairy farmer using all the best management techniques can see a 20% improvement in production. Um, and then looking at another study which looked at pretty good farmers already, that translates into you know, over $380 per hectare per year. So that's the sort of money side of it. But looking at the other side is, I'm an engineer, so I think of it in engineering terms, you can't manage a system properly without managing the outputs of the system. And by managing the outputs with our device, we can optimise the amount of fertiliser and the amount of water that we place on the system. So rather than guessing and, and going, oh, this part paddock looks similar to that paddock, so I'm going to put it on, we can time applications and we can time the amount of applications. And as I said, timing is everything. You know, like a lot of things in life, when you apply the fertiliser or apply the water at the right time, you get the right response. So we're providing that feedback loop to help farmers and other people associated with those farms understand exactly when the right time to apply, particularly nitrogen is a good example, but also water. I mean, at the moment, people use very broad brush um, values for when the, uh, the wilt point for a, for a paddock, for example, is. With our system, we can actually see when does the grass slow down the growth. We can then realise... Uh, or understand how much moisture is in the soil at that point. So then, going forward, we can learn from that experience and then understand when the best time is to apply um, a water, just as an example. Uh, so we've proven our system. I'm just looking up here. This graph here shows a whole uh, the, the close correlation we see with our system to real pasture masses. So it's a, a system that's got a huge amount of scientific basis and understanding behind it. And in the process now, over the next year or so, we're integrating that. We're sharing our data with different bodies. We're going to share, with our farmers' permission, of course, that data with fertiliser companies or seed companies or other systems to be able to optimise their thing. But we're also going to bring all that data together and start looking at making learnings on larger systems and larger areas and understand how we can best increase productivity and, and reduce the environmental impact um, of our farming. I'm Aaron Furr with Next Farm. We're an agri-tech startup out of Dunedin. We've been going for just over two years now, and we are creating the future of irrigation through our environmentally responsive irrigation control system. So what that means is we're incorporating on relevant on-farm systems and sensors to provide that feedback and, and action it through our control system. Um, so I, fortunately, here in New Zealand, we don't 
have as, as large of water problems as some places in the world. I studied in California during one of their worst droughts. Um, food production needs to increase by 70% to feed the glowing world population. We saw Cape Town um, nearly have day zero where they literally didn't have any water left. It's estimated that two thirds of the world population will be facing these types of scenarios by 2025. Um, so obviously water is this is resource of, of high importance and we've actually experienced problems with water usage on farm and that's how Next Farm really came about. So we were working with irrigation control systems where we didn't have the flexibility to easily adjust schedules based on weather conditions or stock movements or anything like that. Um, batteries need to be changed in some of these systems as well, working with fixed grid, and there was no feedback loop. So we never really knew if that valve was working as it was supposed to until we went out the next day and the sprinkler had been running for 24 hours and that had caused us damage. Or alternatively, we went out later in the season and found that actually this section of the farm wasn't getting the, the production and growth because there was lack of water. Um, so this really led us into what we've been developing and trying to create that variable rate control across other irrigation types outside of pivots. And so we launched last year with 500 units across four different test sites in central Otago um, and had some really good results with that, with water control and those integrations. Um, and what we've really built on is working with electronics designers, irrigation installers, and farmers to really design for that end use um, and, that, and that end scenario. And so really making a simple, reliable system with those necessary integrations to get the relevant parts of, of the farm system that need to inform how water is being applied, connecting with fertigation dosers so we can actually start tailoring that fertilizer application based on specific regions of the farm. I, mean, I was reading a study the other day that nutrient leaching can be reduced by 27% with that um, precise water control. So we're really looking at how can we apply the exact amount of water in the right place at the right time. Um, and we had, um, from some of those trial sites last year, one was a dairy farm, Rolling Terrain, and they actually convinced their the business partner after they've seen what the control allowed them to do with their fixed grid, and their business partner down the road is now installing all, all fixed grid posts and, and not actually putting any pivots in, um, just because it allows that level of versatility and flexibility and efficiency on their farm. Um, so yeah, from that, that last test, very successful year, and um, we were in the Innovation Launch Awards this year to commercialize this coming season. Um, had a lot of help from Callahan, which have been really useful along the way, and um, looking at expanding our team and, and setting up some offshore test sites in the coming year as well. That's Next Farm. Kia ora, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. As you said, my name is Claire Bradley, and I'm the Business Development Manager at Agracy. I'm going to take you on a little bit of a different journey today. Marine biotechnology is rapidly gaining recognition to provide innovative and scientific solutions for our biomedical, agrochemical, nutraceutical and cosmetic industries. Agracy has been pioneering New Zealand seaweed uh, biotechnology industry for past 20 years. We're a family owned, privately, uh, privately owned family run business and we've had substantial success in the kiwi fruit viticulture, agriculture, and recently apiculture sectors in New Zealand. We also export our nutritional products and biostimulants to Europe, the US, and Australia. We've developed a pretty long-term clear R&D project that really seeks to unlock our marine bioactive resources and how they can help farmers to reduce their environmental contaminants. The particular project that we're going to talk about today has had funding from Callaghan Innovation um, and we have a fantastic PhD student, Matthew Beck, who's at Lincoln University and under the hugely knowledgeable Pablo Gregorini. Matt's focus is on creating a new product out of our marine fermentation technologies to help ruminant nutrition and environmental contaminants. Matt has already produced his first poster paper that was presented at the Australian New Zealand Marine Biotech Conference in Australia last month. And so without any further ado, I'll introduce Matt. Uh, thank you for that, Claire. Um, as she said, I'm uh, Matt Beck. I'm a student at Lincoln University. Um, so first, I'd like to answer why seaweed. Well, seaweed has... Uh, um, different bioactive compounds, which include fluorotannins. Fluorotannins have been shown to uh, 
provide antioxidant and uh, uh, environmental protective benefits in, in ruminant animals, so cows, deer, sheep. Um, they also contain complex carbohydrates, which can act as prebiotics, so that's feeding good bacteria in the gut to, uh, to allow them to proliferate and the uh, inefficient bacteria to, uh, to be reduced. And uh, why agri Well, agri takes this seaweed and then through their fermentation process, it produces uh, new bacteria which uh, have probiotic effects. Um, and so the next question is, how much should we use and is less more? Well, from the studies that we've done, uh, one we used in vitro, so we had these glass jars full of rumen fluid collected from dairy cows and we had an increasing amount of dose, and it was the lowest level of this uh, product that had the greatest effect, which could be counterintuitive, uh, but, or counterintuitive, but whenever you put that on a uh, milliliters per animal per day, it's spot on with what Agrisy was suggesting. Uh, so that's five milliliters per head per day. So if you put that into context of, you have a cow with an 80 liter rumen, that is 0.006% of the rumen volume that you're adding and we're having massive effects. Um, so when we look at these, these, uh, this dose in, in dairy cows, um, at five milliliters, we saw more fermentation. So the total volatile fatty acids, which are the uh, products produced by ruminal fermentation that the cow then uses as energy, uh, we had an increase in 26%. Um, this increased energy led to a greater body condition score from these cows as they're going through the dry period uh, to calving. And these cows had uh, greater antioxidant levels. Um, so that's total antioxidant status in the plasma and also lower glutathione peroxidase, which is an antioxidant enzyme uh, level, which could be used as a marker of uh, oxidative stress. So these animals, uh, they uh, produce more energy from the same amount of feed, they gain more weight, and they felt better. So in the lactation phase, we increased the dose to 100 milliliters, and at, uh, uh, at that dose, we saw an 18% reduction in urinary nitrogen. Um, and they also produced about 12% less CO2. Uh, and additionally, uh, trends from that first, uh, the dry cow experiment, would indicate that uh, while we may not reduce methane on a per animal basis, we likely have reduced methane on a per unit of intake or per unit of energy intake, uh, which is really interesting. Um, so where you can find me, there's my email address, and uh, I'll be, be around here all day. Thank you. Kia ora tato. Nice to be here. Um, our family farm in the Wairarapa is bounded on three sides by the mighty Paho River. It's a big river, third largest in the Wairarapa. In 2006, my dad bought the farm and moved out there. Over the space of about four years, we watched that river die. Fish were washing up dead. It was choked with algae in summer went from sparkling, clean, swimmable waters to waters that we couldn't even stand being around because sometimes it stunk like a cow shed. When we went to do something about it, we were told to gather data. The council said, we need data on that water quality of where to do anything about it. So when we went to get data, we found that that was actually really difficult to do. And we found that New Zealand's only measuring 8% of its rivers and 5% of its lakes. So what data that we do have is actually telling a really bad story. We know that our rivers are in crisis, but we're actually not measuring them. We don't have a lot of data. The data that we do have is really bad, but how are we going to get the rest of the data? How are we going to fill in those gaps? So my dad and I decided to tackle this problem with innovation. We decided that there was technology out there that would enable us to better sample our river water quality and to do it in real time and that it wouldn't cost us $30,000 per device, and that we wouldn't have to go to Europe or to America to get those devices, that we could build them here, and that we could create this innovation here by partnering with people like Callahan Innovation, 
Spark, the network providers, with some of the best minds from the Hamilton Jet with their industrial design for boat design. And this is what we've come up with. This is the Riverwatch prototype. This will sit in your water and it will sample five parameters of water quality. This will give you an indication of overall river health. We've left a space in there for a nitrate probe. So once the nitrate probes that Lincoln University are working on become smaller and able to fit in our device, then we're going to put these in here as well. But there's a little bit of magic in this. The magic is in the knowledge that we can get from these five probes. They're inexpensive. And what most people don't know is that we can infer nitrates from what we can sample with these. We can also infer phosphates and we can infer E. coli. So some of the biggest problems of water sampling is biofouling. The way that we solve this is with AI. So our, our platform that takes the data from this will be able to tell you about your management decisions. So it will tell you whether the water is safe to swim in. It can tell you where you've got an incursion of uh, sediment. It can tell you, tell you where you're having problems with your pollution levels. So we've brought the price down to $5,000 for this at the moment, and in the next two years it's going to come down to two. That is well under a quarter of the equivalent device that you can buy on the market today. We wanted to make this affordable for every New Zealander because we don't want this to be something that only councils manage. We want this to be something that the farmers manage. You put one of these at the top of your farm where the water comes into your, your land and one at the bottom. And you measure the water quality as it changes on your land. And if you can show that you're having an improvement on that water quality, then you have a good story to tell. Tell that story to the people who buy your products. Tell that story to the council through your farm environment management plans. You can tell your story about what you're doing that is good for the water in your land. And if we get everybody on board doing that, then we can start to clean up our waterways. Thank you. My name's Josh White, and I'm the co-founder of Take It Technologies and Managing Director. Sorry. That was possibly my fault. Um, <laughs> So Tega Technologies has been working on farms for 18 years in the agri-tech space. We don't do anything else. Uh, we pitched a product called Halo a few years back. We now have 1,000 units out on the farm, or sorry, 1,000 units on 1,000 different farms with three and a half, 4,000 nodes collecting information and data. The product was designed as a managerial tool for farmers and one of our byproducts is data. We've seen a huge growth in the last 18 months in our effluent products for, from a farmer's perspective to manage what they have on farm and also for a compliance to make sure they're meeting the minimum requirements. Um, today, oh, I've still got the name right as well. <laughs> I was just going to show a short video, obviously because of constructed time, uh, constrained of time. It's a little bit about our story, how we grew up on the farm, how things have changed through the years and now how technology is replacing what family and friends used to do. And just reviewing this quickly, and it'll probably go over by 30 seconds, but it's kind of funny, 40 years ago the government was paying us to burn down trees and break farmland in, and now they kind of stopping you doing anything, so.
So there was just a few snippets from the late 70s, early 80s, moving through to what we currently do on farm today. So we're on PA2, come down for a chat, have a look, you'll see products that we've got, you'll see some of the capability, and we can go through a lot of the technology we've got there for you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Maureena. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to introduce Graham Fitzgerald, who's there. Hold your hand up, Graham, so they can see you. Um, so in terms of visiting Air Balance site, you'll, uh, uh, E79, you'll be able to get a bit more detail about what we're actually showing and seeing these things actually in, in practice. Uh, just an intro to Balance, we're New Zealand's largest nutrient management fertiliser company and we have national coverage and a whole host of business units related to nutrient management. Uh, four key ones within the nutrient management space, uh, two I'm going to talk about, Mitigator and My Pasture Planner, but also we have our My Balance, which is our data management warehouse system and we also have a variable rate aircraft system called SpreadSmart, which you can come and have a look at. Why a lot of these tools being developed? Well, obviously, as you know, regional councils are promulgating uh, uh, new, uh, uh, nutrient constraints across the country, and as these come into place, they create constraints in how farmers have to manage within those limitations. So this is what underpins a lot of these products you're seeing. How do we optimise our farm system within these types of constraints? So Mitigator is one of these tools. It's hosted by Graham's team in terms of farm sustainability service and it's an advisory package. Essentially it takes uh, several data feeds, so some farm maps, it uses Overseer, so we use Overseer so farmers aren't getting two metrics in terms of their externality footprint. Uh, it generates risks maps and then we integrate it into uh, farm plans that prioritise and rank economically and from a, a uh, a benefit perspective, the role that mitigations they use can have. So it uses a georeferenced map, um, soil map, DEM, digital elevation model, and aerial photographs. So a lot of IT smarts go in there in terms of integrating those all, all together. And essentially what we produce is a range of risk maps, uh, both quantifying and visually representing them. Uh, they're done in this colour scheme for colour blind people, 7% of males are colour blind, so you actually need a, a colour scheme that actually covers a range of people. And the key attribute to notice and the reason we use visual rather than metrics is you'll notice all those four maps are different. And when you're making capital investments on farms, which externality are you actually wanting to address and how do you manage your infrastructure? So this is very important in terms of prioritising them. And in also knowing which catchment you're in. So which externality you're wanting to manage, is it N or P or sediment or E. coli or the whole lot. And Graham and his team, they integrate these into farm plan documents. So you can get risk maps as one service or we can get them integrated in these farm plans. So again, we use lots of visual tools so they rapidly uptake. It's easy to communicate to employees and other staff that often have to do the tactical things on farm that impact on those. The next tool is My Pasture Planner. This is essentially about how do you manage and optimise nitrogen use when you're constrained how much N you can use on the farm. And this is quite revolutionary in New Zealand because up till recent times there was no way to actually quantify uh, the response you got to nitrogen and, and the spatial variability within farms. Basically we take a soil N test, we integrate it, look at optimisation within that farm system in terms of rate, timing, etc. Uh, can be used on a range of systems and in terms of range of outcomes you're wanting to get. It's about getting the right product, uh, the right rate, the right time and the right place. And so those are the key things and we can get significant gain from doing that. So if you come along you'll be able to see that tool demonstrated with real examples about the spatial variability that's there. Thank you and visit us at site E79. Thank you. So just like our, our colleagues at um, Balance, we're uh looking after a whole heap of farmers. And what's really exciting about seeing what's going on in the industry is all this stuff around sustainability. We just had our customer survey results come back and um, the number one thing people have talked about is uh, better environmental outcomes over everything. And I think it's a really important message for us to take to urban New Zealand and it's really important that we're here today talking about it. And Ravenstown's really just like Balance at the forefront of how we bring this to the masses because we have a whole lot of technology that's, you know, we've got early adoption and lots of stuff. And so what I'm going to talk to you today about is not necessarily actually some of the really cool science stuff, but how we get that and take that to thousands of people. Oh, 
I'd already flicked the switch. And so one of the tools that Raven's Down does, just like um, other people in the industry, we have um, models around um, uh, um, nutrient loss and, and how to, how to optimise that. We have effluent management systems, all those kind of things. And you can come down to Ravenstown's site, which is just up the road, D66. Uh, D66, yes, to come and, um, come and see us about that. But it's how do we bring those together and actually make them an everyday thing for farmers? Because we've actually had a long time and a long history in this. And what we actually find is we've kind of hit a peak of people that are really interested and they're really good in it. And they, I hope that none of them are here. They're kind of geeks about it. They love it. How do we take that to the next group of people and make 80% of our farmers, you know, of our 26,000 shareholders to, to do that? So Hawkeye is our way to do that. Hawkeye is a farm nutrient management program that is not only in the office, but in your hands. Um, and when we talk to customers about um, uh, what they wanted, so we're really thinking about the customer focus here, what they need from nutrient management. They obviously love the science, but what do they need day to day about it? Well, they needed that thing which is licensed to operate, that's better environmental outcomes, and I'm really pleased to see that that's surfaced now to the top thing that everyone's wanting. Um, they of course want um, increased productivity, but the key thing, and I've just been standing on the stand for a couple of days, is oh, I've got so much on and I have to know so much. It's about more time to farm. And so that's the kind of key thing that we're trying to bring with our Hawkeye product, is make this everyday kind of stuff. So um, the way we do that is that um, Hawkeye is a hub of all the data coming in, um, but really around the things that Ravensdown's good at and that Ravensdown was set up for 40 years to do, which is environmental, nutrient management, and crop and pasture production. Um, and so um, whereas in the past years, lots of people have thought about building a tool that kind of covers everything, we want to build a tool that we've been going to set up to do, and we need to partner with people, and that's why it's really exciting to see new, new technologies here um, to bring the industry up. And so in engaging some of the information that people from um, CDEX or uh, TrapMap or FarmMax algorithms for predictive pasture and what happens with uh, nitrogen when you apply it and, and what the, how to optimise that, we bring that all together and bring that into to then do the everyday thing was what are you doing around your fertiliser purchases in Ravenstown's case. Um, and so um, the other thing we're bringing in is obviously all the um, expertise and our certified nutrient management um, professionals that are out there um, coming up with things like nutrient budgets, farm environmental plans, using some of the models we've developed and are in the industry, of course, using Overseer. Um, our environmental team looking at, um, which we have a large environmental consultancy, looking at regional council rules, good management practices, and then bringing those together and putting them into our agronomy plans so that as an everyday farmer, you don't have to know too much about that you can actually then do that and enact that every day. And so my example is, um, we have uh, over the last couple of years had over 100, it's about 180 dairy farms that now have edicted that once all that work's been done, so all the science and all that work's been done, it's put in a, in a place um, in our system that then their farm managers, so the guys every day, are only ordering off those agronomy plans that are meeting good nutrient management plans and getting the best productive outcomes. And then they are managing that, looking over that, and making sure that their plan versus actuals are going ahead. Um, so, uh, which then checks that the orders are compliant, we're an ambulance at the top of the cliff. It's not just about producing compliance data, but about how do we make better decisions day to day, and that's what Hawkeye is. Um, so um, feel free to come and have a talk to us. Um, we've got uh, another, this morning we also um, are really proud to announce that we um, won an award um, for our effluent management technology, which is um, ClearTech, which again is a, a similar product to really solve some of those problems around um, water usage at times of year. So um, thanks very much. <laughs>